Want red beans and rice that taste real nice? Ask Corey, he got the story. Want to make lasagna better than your mama? Ask Corey, he got the story. Want blackened catfish to be your main dish? Ask Corey, he got the story. Want to make gumbo without all the mumbo jumbo? Ask Corey, he got the story. Want a king cake that ain't no fake? Ask Corey, he got the story. Want to make a poor boy that'll bring your mouth joy? Ask Corey, he got the story. Corey Rokan, Food 411. So, P, here we are. We're going to do a cooking show today. And in today's episode, we're going to teach you a tradition. Have you ever heard of a Militon? Nope. Have you ever heard of a Militon? Well, probably not. So, before I start, I want to say that this suggestion came from Facebook. So, Janet Chesser, this one's for you. So, Militons actually happen to be a family tradition for me. And as you know, I grew up in New Orleans, and my great-great-grandfather grew Militons. And a Militon, and we'll get to the pronunciation of this in a minute, but a Militon is like a... Um, it grows on a vine and it kind of looks it's in a squash family and and it's got probably 10 or 15 different names depending on where you are in the United States and in the world came from Mesoamerica and here in Florida they call it a coyote squash so live I'm gonna teach my daughter this tradition and hopefully it moves on and on and on just like I was taught in my my mother was taught, my grandmother was taught, my great-great-grandparents were taught about these Militons. So I hope you enjoyed this very special episode of where I teach my daughter about how to stuff a Militon. So Parker, a Militon is actually spelled M-I-R-L-E-T-O-N. So it's probably like a Merliton. And the word Merliton comes from Creole Haitian. So go back to New Orleans, and there's a lot of Creoles there. And if you ask somebody from New Orleans what a Creole is, they don't really know. Well, there's a lot of different answers to that, and we're not going to get too deep. But in the island of Haiti, uh, when the slave trades were going on, there was a lot of French in Haiti, and a lot of slaves ended up in Haiti. And they kind of mixed together, and it was called Creole Haitian. So Merliton is actually a Creole Haitian word and a lot of the words in New Orleans are really Creole or Haitian Creole. So that's where Merliton comes from and we call them Militons. So just how words get changed through the years, that's how we came up with Militons, but it's probably a Merliton. So anyway, we're going to learn how to cook stuff Militons. And I hope you guys enjoy this recipe as much as I enjoy passing on a tradition to my daughter and hopefully you'll take this tradition and move it on with your family. So sit back and enjoy and I hope you really enjoy this episode. So this is one of the greatest joys of my life. There's a couple of Italians in the kitchen cooking, passing down family traditions. So I've got my sous chef cutting up one stalk of celery, a half of a bell pepper, a whole onion, and then we're going to do some garlic. Eh, probably close to the whole head of garlic. We like garlic around here. I've got some water boiling. I'm just going to salt it. And here, my friends, is the Militon. It almost looks like a pear. Hard. Feel it. What would you say that feels like? Like a boulder. Like a boulder? Like a rock. Like a hard apple? Oh yeah. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to cook this Militon until it's nice, soft, and tender. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut it lengthways like so. You can see the insides of this. We're going to cook this. This flesh is what we want. This is tasty. 
and we want the outsides to be nice and soft. That slipped. <laughs> it's okay, you can laugh. Okay. We can cut all four of these, stick them in this boiling water. And we're going to boil until just about they're tender. And one of the problems with our recipes that are handed down, nobody ever tells us how long to do stuff. So one of the things that we're getting out of these videos is as you watch them, after I figure out how long it is, I tell you, and then you can write down these recipes and pass them down to your family. All right. So while she's doing this, I'm peeling the shrimp. All right, well, we got the millitons boiling for 10 or 15 minutes, mother. Let me just say something about that. I'm going to get back to that in just a second. So, my sous chef here, as she's learning about the tradition of millitons, we got a medium onion, diced, one stalk of celery, diced. Such a fine job, too, by the way. Thank you. Surely did. Wonderful job. Half a bell pepper. Garlic. Aha! Not yet. <laughs> Why didn't I put the garlic in? You can always put it in last. Aha! Because it burns. See? I teach. Unlike my mother, who gives vague references on how to do things. So let me tell you how these Italians work. My grandmother, the revered one, she doesn't tell anybody any recipe. So my daughter and I were just talking, and we were talking about handing down recipes and traditions and things like that. And I said, you know what? My grandmother never taught me one single thing about cooking. She goes, really? And I said, yeah. She hides it all for secrets. My mom is a little bit closer. She gives me hints, right? So the good thing is I know what the flavor is supposed to be. I know what it's supposed to taste like. So I spent my entire life trying to figure this stuff out. So I told my mom I was cooking uh, millitons. And I was asking, you know, some hints just to make sure I got it. And I said, so how long do I boil these things? Ah, 10, 15 minutes. Where are you, Mom? Can't find her. There we go. Here we go. So, Mom, how long do I cook the millitons? Oh, you just boil them about 10 or 15 minutes until they soft. It, it's good, 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, really, 10 or 15 minutes? It's an hour and a half later. But I got one on you, Mom. I know what they're supposed to taste like. So I know that it's going to be about an hour and a half. So I'm actually going to teach my daughter how to actually cook this stuff. So you're going in time out, and we're going to learn how to really cook this stuff. So all I'm doing is just softening this stuff. Now, we, we peeled about, about a pound of shrimp. You can boil this stuff and then cut it up, but we're going to do something a little different here. We took the shrimp. I added uh, about a tablespoon and a half of Zatarans. Crab boil. Our secret. That's the secret. Thank you, Pete. So whenever I was putting this in there, she goes, what are you doing? I said, this is the secret. She goes, ooh, so you're not going to tell them? I said, no, I have no secrets. So look at this. It's sitting right here. That's a secret. And I put about a tablespoon of salt and then some fresh cracked pepper. And I've just got this sitting on ice. What I had my sous chef do, she diced this really, really fine, just like the vegetables. And I've got my shrimp. Now the shrimp cooks really, really quickly. So what I'm doing is I'm going to soften this up a little bit. And then I'm going to add my shrimps. Shrimps. <laughs> That's what we do around here. We call them shrimps. 
Now my millitons over here are still boiling. Um, they're softening up. Imagine like a like a hard apple when it started, but the, the skin stays hard or it stays together and the insides just getting cooked and cooked and cooked and cooked and cooked. So what we want to do is we want to soften it up to where we can scoop it out. And that's going to be like the, the yummy goodness of this whole dish. Alright, so these are getting softened up. Throw my garlic in here. And we did just about a whole head of garlic here. Yep, we didn't do in the inside of the garlic, they had the little tiny pieces, we omitted those. So we probably got, what'd you say, about eight to ten? Well, eight to ten toes of garlic. That's what we call them, toes. Right, we're having a good time. We've been in here listening to music, cutting everything up, having a good time, right? All right, put my shrimps in here. Yes, I know it's shrimp. I like to say shrimps. All right, finally, finally chopped. Can you come stir this while I wash my hands? Sure. I'll let my sous chef do this. So we want to just uh, mix it all up, get it all in the heat. And the thing about shrimp, guys, you got to cook it really quick. Once it gets pink, it's done. If you overcook it, it starts to get tough. This is actually going to cook in a milliton in the oven as well. So we want to get them just pink, and then we're going to get them out of here. So let's let her stir this for about a minute or two. And then we'll pull them off. All right, so we stirred this for about uh, three, four minutes. As you can see, it's uh, barely starting to get paint. Still got a lot of juice, a lot of flavor. And I don't remember if I told you, but I put about two tablespoons of butter, fresh butter, in the bottom before I started uh, sauteing this stuff. So we're going to stick this in the pot, let it relax for a minute while the 20 minute millitons are still boiling for 20 minutes. That's a joke, it's not 20 minutes, right? I know. I'm laughing. <laughs> So let's let these finish uh, cooking down probably another 15 or 20 minutes. I mean, that seems to be the going rate around here. And then I'll um, <laughs> show you what's next. All right, so it's been another 20 minutes. It really has been about an hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes. What we're doing is, and you can see it's nice and supple on the outside. And we're just gonna scoop this out, almost like you do a baked potato, like a twice baked potato. And the whole time that I'm doing this, my daughter is saying, what about the smell? It smells good. It smells good? It smells really good. She keeps talking about how wonderful it smells. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this and putting it in a food processor. My mom doesn't tell me all these tricks. But you see the liquid in there? I know that's not going to be good. So let me drain this. Just going to pulse this up a little bit. Okay. Just pulse it up a little bit. We're going to add it to our shrimp and vegetable mixture.
then we're going to put about a cup of Parmesan Reggiano, finely grated. Right, my sous chef here was so kind to make that. You can see this, guys. And if you could be so kind to give me some paprika. Not Spanish, just regular old paprika. Now you notice how she asked me what kind of paprika. Um, from some of you that have seen some of the other episodes, paprika can be from a garnish all the way to lots of flavor. We have Hungarian, Spanish, smoked paprika. For this, I just want to make it look pretty on the outside. So I asked her just to get the regular old American paprika. Now, Breadcrumbs. At this point, I don't know how much to add. So I'm just going to add it and mix it until it looks right. That's about a cup and a half. Try to get this where you guys can see it. Parker, if you could add some more breadcrumbs for me. Go ahead, put the rest. Yeah. All right, so it looks like we got about two cups of breadcrumbs. What it's doing is it's sucking up all those extra juices. You don't want this to be runny. Yeah, look at that. See? See how it's sticking together? That's what we're looking for. You have to do it with shrimp. You do not have to do it with shrimp. Good questions. So you can do it with um, anything. You could not have any meat in there at all. The shrimp adds a nice little extra hitch to it. What else could you make it with, you think? Chicken. Chicken? <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe it's one of those things that we try. Now, all we're going to do is take these and stuff them. Like a twice baked potato. So like, like a twice baked potato. You see how soft it is? And this skin, since we boiled it in the salt water, you can eat this whole thing and it's quite delicious actually. This meat has like a sweet taste to it. We add a little bit of salt to it. It's actually very delectable. And all you people down in New Orleans know this. So we're just going to Stuff this, as so. I have the oven sitting at 350. And all we want to do is just kind of brown it. Everything's cooked, it's ready to eat, but you want to make it presentable and pretty. So I'll show you on this first one, and then we're going to do the rest of them. We just take a little bit of garnish. Huh? Just to make it pretty. Paprika, this, this regular old American paprika, no taste to it. It just makes it look beautiful. So let's do the rest of these. I'm going to stick it in the oven for probably 20 minutes, like a for real 20 minutes. So it was 20 minutes. And what I, put the, uh, what I did is put the broiler on high for just like two or three minutes, just to like get a nice little, just brown a little bit to the top. So what I do is I have Mary Parker's first stuffed Militon. So this is the taste that's going to go with her for the rest of her life. So I want her to taste this, and this is a taste that she's going to go after forever and ever. And luckily she has, since we have YouTube, she can watch this episode and know how to make it. So? You gotta get some of this stuff in. Now we're talking. So now you know how to make stuffed militons or coyote squash. Until next time, see ya.